So every life is unique in its own way and no one life can mirror the other. So it's not about mirroring a life. It is about taking the plunge, lessons from a life of adventure, which I have led, and hoping that some of the things which I learned could help some of you maybe achieve a little more, maybe break that little inertia, maybe take that step which you are hesitating to take, drawing from some of the things which I have done. But it is not about joining the army and it is not about jumping out of aircraft. It is a little more and I'll try and walk you through my talk. But first, to reel back to the early days. A student of class 1 and 2 in Ahmedabad, class 3 in Kunur near Uti, class 4 and 5 St. Edmund Shillong. Then I had to repeat my 5th in Sindhya school Gwalior and my 6th. Moved on to Delhi for my 7th and 8th. Came down to Barakpur near Calcutta for my 9th and 10th, which was a board exam. And then on to Delhi again to the Air Force Central School, Shubhra Park, where I finished my 11th. And there I was, a young 15-year-old, having been educated in such a scattered manner. Moving around the country in this manner for a child can be very disconcerting. Your entire ecosystem is shifting every year or two years. You have new classmates, new friends, new teachers. It's a new school. You're adjusting time and time again. Even the games being played in a particular school may not be the same. You have to prove yourself in that class every time. You have to join a particular team. You have to find your space. It can be very challenging. But I look at it that I gained a lot there, that I learned adaptability. It's a different matter that I took on a profession which again required me to keep moving. In fact, all through my life, only four times have I spent more than two years in one place. And all those four times was less than three years. So I took it in my stride. These are the lessons you learn as you go along, but it was a challenge. But you convert a challenge into an opportunity and that is what life teaches you. So at that stage, as a young boy, shy of 16 by a month, I joined the NDA, took the plunge, very few photographs at that time. And just four years later, I had been moving out of the training and I was holding literally in my hand the gold medal for having stood first on that course. How did I do it and what did I use along the way? Discipline as a way of life but straight away up front I will say it is not the military or the NCC which treats discipline as its singular forte. Even in your colleges, even in your schools, a lot of discipline is taught. I will go on about it and explain something more about discipline, how it should you to be a way of life. Equally or more important is the determination to succeed and going the extra mile every time, doing a little more. That, I think, sets you apart and gives you an extra power. Whatever you read in these fiction stories or even your ancient scriptures, I don't think anybody had any magical powers. I think it was a little extra preparation, a little extra effort, which gives you that confidence and you would be able to proceed and face the next challenge because you're that much little better prepared than the next person. One or two other things. Curiosity beyond syllabus. No syllabus is perfect. There may be something outside that syllabus which tomorrow I might need. So I had that curiosity. Conversely, everything in your syllabus may not be 
used by you tomorrow. But I never let that affect me. And as I went on in life, I was teaching later, and I found a tendency among some of my peers, some of my students, that I will focus more on those subjects or those activities which are having more marks. I'll focus more effort there, and this is only 20%. Let me just leave it. I never took that chance. I do not know what tomorrow I will need in life. I also do not know what tomorrow will come in the examination. So I will never a percentage person, and I will never encourage anyone to be that way. Take it the full down, the full way down, and maybe a little beyond. And finally, as you will see as I go along in my talk, a balance of academics and sports and adventure. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Punctuality. I don't think I need to emphasize on this. It's better to be 15 minutes early than to be one second late. Decent dressing. I will not say uniform. Of course, in the uniform forces, what is the meaning of uniform? Everyone wears the same dress. That does not translate into the civil life, but you should be decently dressed. And let me tell you, in my life I have seen people, because of indiscipline, because of lack of punctuality, because of a slovenly appearance, have lost out on jobs, have lost out on even promotions. While they may have the capability, but these issues at times may set you back. Determination to succeed. Going the extra mile, I think that is what is a very important part of this particular theme of this place. How to do more. Going the extra mile, reading one extra book, walking the extra pace, working a little harder. So if I was willing to always do that, it always paid off. And the result would definitely be competitive performance. And today, you have to upskill. You have to improve your performance every now and then. So that took me to commission. That was the sword in my scabbard, and I mentioned, and the gold medal in my hand, and the pips on my shoulder, June 1982. But here I would like to elaborate. The person who's putting my pips, my father and my mother, you see, he's in khaki uniform. And he was a pilot. And guess what I wanted to be? A pilot. My first choice, I wanted to be a fighter pilot. But I did not get my first choice. I had to play the hand which life dealt me. As I went along, two years later into my training, I opted for the Navy. Because I had taken up sailing. There was no vacancy, and I could not get the Navy. Later on, I did find ways and means to get into an aircraft. I did find ways and means to get onto a sailing boat, but that's part of the deal. What I'm getting at is that once the deal is done, the cards are in your hand, you cannot exchange them with somebody else's. You can't pack and ask for a fresh deal. You have to play the hand that is dealt with you, and how you play it what decisions you take is what we are talking about. So I went on to join the Paras. It's a voluntary opportunity given to you. Nobody can force you to do it because you're jumping out of an aircraft. So the point is making the most of opportunities. But everybody, I'm not saying every one of you can jump out of an aircraft, please. <laughs> you may not have the opportunity. You, you may not get it. But life will always throw you other opportunities. When that opportunity comes, think about it, take the step, break the inertia, and maybe, maybe you can achieve something different. Coming on to, as I said, I wanted to be, a, be in the Navy, but I could not join the Navy. Anyway, I went on to windsurfing, went on, earned some prizes, took to teaching. I enjoyed teaching sailing too. I enjoyed teaching a number of things and went on for one gold, two silver, and one bronze medal at the national level. So all this was happening 
side by side. That's me in Goa. As I said, pictures were very hard to come by in those days. And I carried it forward, as was mentioned in the introduction about my last tenure, where I was the additional director general of the NCC cadets, 80,000 of them from the seven northeastern states. It was my last year in service. I could well have let things go the way they were going, managed it, and just hung up my boots. But before hanging up my boots, I wanted to see the cadets doing something exceptional. Having gone there, I discovered the Mughals had never been able to capture Assam or any part of the Northeast because of one man. And that man was General Lachit Barfukan of the Ahom Kingdom. He defeated the Mughal Navy on the water at the Battle of Sarai Ghat in 1671. And we had naval boats. So I took on the challenge. I said, I will do a sailing expedition to honor him. The expedition was difficult. We got an entry in the Limca Book of World Records. But that was not the difficult part. I'm an experienced sailor. I had no doubt that I would be able to do the expedition. The difficult part was breaking the mindset of everyone right from Delhi till Guwahati, to my peers, to my subordinates, that the Brahmaputra is an extremely notorious river. Nobody has ever done it. And I would say, even my wife was once mentioning, that everyone is discouraging you. Why are you going and doing it? I said, no, we will achieve it. This is an iconic photograph. The statue of General Lachit Barfukan, it is off the Pandu Ghat of Guwahati. And I swung the boats to take the blessings of this mighty warrior as they passed just before terminating the expedition. If you have been able to overcome your fear, may it be even the first time stepping out of your parents' house and going independently in a bus. May it be climbing a mountain. May it be crossing a river. Once you have crossed one obstacle, you gain the self-confidence to be able to do more. And that is what this is all about, to be able to do more. You gain the self-confidence. You overcome your own fears. And that is what I wanted to do. So what you see as I go along, and probably what I have been able to explain to you so far, it was always a movement from the routine to the extreme. I was never willing to accept the status quo. And having done a few difficult things, I would understand the long hours of study are the least difficult of them all. And I would encourage all of you, once you step out of your comfort zone, you will realize that long hours of study is not at all difficult. If you can climb a mountain, if you can cross a river stream, if you can run a marathon, what is so difficult about opening a book? It's not so difficult. And I'm not speaking theory. I went along side by side. I also was a gold medalist in the BTEC. I'd done my Master of Sciences, I'd done my MPhil, and I completed my PhD last year. So all about doing more and trying to break the mold. And towards the end, I have gone on to become an author, as was mentioned. This is the feature which came in the Week magazine the first week of this month. It is the saga of Lieutenant Colonel Niranjan, who laid down his life in the NSG operation at Pathankot 2016. So what I'm trying to explain to you all along is about being different. But it would not have been possible without the family support. I'm very happy to have Anita here with me today. And my two handsome sons, one of them is here with me today. One is not here. He's training to be an Air Force officer at AFA Hyderabad. This is on the China border of Sikkim, just overlooking Dukala, where that incident took place in 2017. Climbing always to new horizons, always looking to reach beyond, take an extra step, take the plunge, and thereafter make it work. So, thank you for this. 
And when I say happy landings, it is a greeting between paratroopers that your next jump should also end in a happy landing. And I do hope whatever path of life you take, you have a safe and happy landing and do very well in whichever field you take. Thank you.